As of a few weeks ago, the new proposal for Vuex 5 was posted in the Vue RFC's repository. What we're going to do is take a look at it, talk about some of the good things, uh, maybe some of the potential problems. I built a simple app using something very similar to this and we're going to see how that looks as well. So this is the RFC right here and there is a bunch of comments we're going to take a look at. Here is the basic gist of how things look. So it's very different to Vuex 4, but I do like the improvements generally. The first thing you'll notice is we use a define store. This is very similar to define component in Vue 3, so kind of following that convention where we use define. You need to provide a few keys. The first one is the key. This is kind of similar to a name, so in this case it's a counter store, so we're going to call it counter. We have the state. This is something very familiar to you if you've used Vuex before. We then have getters, and this is another very similar thing. It's basically going to be computed properties for your store. Finally, we have actions, and this is where you do all of your logic, I suppose. You could fetch some data, you could increment the state, or whatever you like. So two things are very different here to Vuex 4. Firstly, getters do not receive any arguments. So if you want to use part of another part of the state, you have to find some other way to do that, and we're going to see how you can do that. Another, probably the biggest change here, is there's no mutations, there's just actions. And inside of actions, you can do whatever you like. You can do an API call, you can do some logic, you can even directly access this state. So it's going to be much more simple, but you do have to be careful to make sure you don't end up with these very, very large complex methods. So we're going to talk about some strategies to work around that one as well. So you can't actually use this RFC, unfortunately, it's still a work in progress, but there is a very similar application or a very similar library out there available. And here it is. It is called Pina and it's made by Eduardo who also makes Vue Router and a bunch of other very cool libraries. If we scroll down here, we have this cute little icon. If we go a bit further down, we see their basic uh, proposal as well. And you can see it is very similar to Vuex 5. It's so similar, you can actually basically just use this and get a very good feel for how Vuex is going to look. In the, very similar, we have an ID here instead of key, that's going to be the name of the store. State is identical, getters is also identical, and actions is also identical as well. Pina gives you a few extra APIs, but we're going to focus on the very basic ones and see how these work together in an application. So if we jump over here, I have a very simple application. It's going to refresh it, it's going to load some data from a server, and we have a bunch of different items you can buy. We have our cart over here, and it's going to tell you the total cost of the products. If I go ahead and add a bunch of different things, it's going to tell me how many I'm purchasing, the subtotal as well as the total, and I can go ahead and remove those as well. All of this is controlled via Vuex or rather via Pina, and we're going to take a look at how that is set up and comment sort of on how things look and how things have changed from Vuex 4. Let's jump into the source code right now. So the first thing we're going to look at is app.view, and this is the only component in the entire application, so everything you see here is inside of app.view. The template is only about 50 lines long, it's not very interesting, so we're going to skip right over it and jump down here into the script tag. The first appearance of this new store is this line here. We have use product store, and that's how we're going to access all of the products. We're going to take a look first at how you interact with things in your components, then we'll jump into the stores, see how they look, talk a little bit about testing, and then talk about some of the good and bad things here. So the first thing we're going to do to access the store is just call it use product store. So this is very similar to any other composable. You just call it, they're usually called use, and then you grab access to your product store. The really big difference here is this is completely type safe unlike Vuex 4. So for example, I can do something like the product store, I can access the state and grab all or IDs. I can also grab those directly like this and that's going to be completely type safe. If I was to go ahead and grab a getter, I have a getter called list. Uh, we can see this is going to be type safe as well. I'm going to say const string, it's going to be a number type and that's not going to compile because of course number is not assignable to an array of products. So this is the kind of the main feature of this new, this new design. It's completely type safe, which is unlike Vuex 4, which had some type safety problems. You can also see it's very easy to access an action. I have an action called fetch all. You don't have to do anything like uh, dispatch and pass in your name anymore. All you do is call it like a regular method. So it's a lot more simple and easy to understand. Uh, we have one more store down here. I have the use cart store, which I'm accessing the cart here. And it's almost exactly the same. It just has a bunch of different things. We have the state and we have the getters. So for example, I have a total, which is the total cost of all the items. One other thing you need to keep in mind is when you have your getters, you must wrap them in computed or they're not going to update. For example, this list is going to be empty when the application loads. After the API call finishes, there's going to be some products. But if I don't use computed, it's not going to be reactive. It's going to use the initial value, which is going to be an empty array. 
so you have to make sure you wrap those in computed. This is exactly the same for both Pina and for Vuex. Uh, other than that, I have two more actions down here. We have add and remove, and again, they're just very simple methods. Everything works as you would expect it to work. The next thing we're going to do is take a look at the product store and see what's going on there. So this is the product store. The first thing you need to do is import define store from either Vuex or Pina, depending which one you're going to be using. And let's just jump down here. We have defined an interface for the state. It's very simple. We have ID here, which is going to be products. This can be anything you like. And the next thing we have is the state. You don't need to put this definition here. Uh, that's optional. I can get rid of this and you can see it's still going to give us the correct inference. For example, I can say this.ids. But you can see there is a bit of a problem. It doesn't know what kind of array it's going to be. It just says never. So by correctly typing this up here, I'm going to get the correct inference. If I do this.ids now and hold my mouse over it, it's going to tell me it's an array of strings and that is exactly correct. So I do recommend if you are going to use this, make sure you define your state interfaces to make sure you get uh, maximum type safety. We have state down here, it's all very simple. We have getters here, again, very simple. We don't receive any arguments here and we're going to talk about why that is in just a moment. And finally, we have an action down here. It's really just a very simple method. There's no need to dispatch anything or commit anything. You don't receive any arguments. So all I'm doing here is making an API call to a server and then passing the data and I go ahead and update state directly. You can either update the whole state like this or you can update part of the state by doing something like this.ids or this.all, however you like. And that's it. It's all very, very simple and straightforward. Let's take a look at a bit more complex example, which is going to be the cart store. So this is the cart store. Again, very simple, you just import the define store and you can see here I'm actually importing use product store as well. You're able to import stores to each other and compose them together. If we scroll down here, we can see an example of that. State is exactly the same, so I'm going to skip over that one. So is the actions for add and remove, but this is going to be a bit more interesting. We have total and formatted cart. So in the case of total, I need to get the price of the product and that's saved inside of the product store. So all I need to do is import use product store and call that one here. Now I can go ahead and access any of the product values inside of here. This is the reason you don't need to have any arguments for your getters or your actions because all the, all the stores are just going to be simple functions. All you need to do is import them, use them, and you're able to access everything. So it's going to make things a whole lot more simple. This is much more simple than the original API in Vuex4 where you have something like state and then you have root state, and then you have some other arguments. It's a little bit difficult to remember. If you did want to have an argument to your getter, that would be very simple as well. All you would need to do is go return, and you would return the, the argument here, and then you would return the body of this. So that's how you could implement a getter with an argument, which is exactly the same as you were doing in Vuex4. We have another example down here of using the store. We're just going to access the products inside of the format cart getter. All I need to do is call use product store, and everything works as you would expect. So things do compose together pretty nicely, which is uh, definitely a plus. I'm able to do exactly the same thing, both inside of my store and also inside of my component. If we head back to the component, you can see I'm doing the exact same thing here. I'm just calling use cart store. So the last thing we're going to talk a little bit about is testing and how you can test these things. And this is one of the areas I had a little bit of uh, problems or complexity. So the products test is probably the most simple. We're going to start there. We're going to go ahead and import the product store and we have to import create pina or create vuex in vuex and we're going to have this set active pina method. What I had to do here was I created a kind of function to set everything up. So let's take a look at the test first. I'm just going to go ahead and say use product store or use subject and that's going to be the subject of the test. In this case, the product store. I called up product store. I set up some initial state and then I asserted that everything was transformed correctly and that's all very straightforward. My setup function is also very, very uh, simple. I just created the new store. This one's called Pina, but in Vuex, it's going to be create Vuex. You then return this, the hook and you're ready to go. So this is fine for a very simple example, but let's see a more complex example. If we head over to the cart spec, it is going to be a little bit more complex. And the reason this is more complex is because we have global state. What is not clear in the previous spec, let's just jump back over there, is I'm setting the state down here. And this is actually going to set the state for any other test that uses the product store as well. We're going to get cross test contamination. Any other test that runs in the code base is going to have the state equal to this now. And this is not really ideal. What would be nice if we could reset the state somehow, but because we're importing these global singletons, there's no easy way to reset the state. This is unlike Vuex4 where you could easily create a new store and just tear it all down. So we're going to have to find some way to work around that. One proposal would be to create a method to reset your state, and that's exactly what I had to do in the cart spec. So what I had to do in the cart spec, or I'll just show you the spec first, I wanted to get the total of the cart. 
So for example, over here, I wanted to calculate this total value here. What this means is I have to create a cart. I need some products. So the product store also needs to be populated. So to do that, I had to first come up here and create this setup method. Uh, so we're going to go ahead, create our new store, create our product store. We're then going to assign some state and then we're going to assign the cart store as well. I'm assigning those to be global variables up here. Uh, it's a little bit ugly to get the type, but I was able to do it. And now I'm able to start doing my tests. Before each test, I'm going to call setup and it's just going to initialize all of that data. And after each test, I'm just going to go ahead and reset the store. This reset method is PINA specific. It's going to reset the state, but you could very easily imp implement something very similar in Vuex 5 if they don't support it out of the box. Uh, so that's not really a big problem. Now that I've done that, I'm making sure I'm cleaning up properly and we can jump down and see the test. I just went ahead and added two products to my cart. So I'm, I'm buying two of this thing and they're going to cost 200. Each one is going to be 100. I then remove one and it's going to have a cost of 100. One of the downsides of having this kind of global setup like I have here is it's not entirely clear what's going on. For example, you see this is going to be 200, but you have no idea why. What you need to do is then go see test product and then you observe it costs 100. And this is very easy in a simple code base, but if the code, gets, code base gets very, very large, this can be difficult to track down. So I do some, see some potential test maintainability issues here if you're not very careful with these global singletons. Other than that, the test is fairly straightforward. You don't have to do anything specific and you don't even need to create a view component because it's all just very simple functions. I was able to go ahead and create this fairly simple test. Everything works as you would expect. So in that sense, it's pretty nice. Again, it's all very type safe. So even though there is some potential complexity with the tests, having TypeScript and type safety makes a big difference. And that's probably the main feature that is going to be impactful for Vuex 5. I'm actually so concerned about this testing problem. I came over here inside of a discussion thread and I created a comment about it. So I'll be interested to see if the team has any strategies to improve testing or something like that. This kind of thing is not super unusual. It's quite common to have global state in a lot of JavaScript applications. So I don't see this as really a big problem, but it is good to keep these things in mind. Anyway, I'm going to put the source code up for this application. You can go ahead and play around with it and see how everything works. If you do want to try this out, you can go and grab the library. It's called Pina. This is very similar to Vuex 5, and I would say this is probably what Vuex 5 is going to end up seeming like, but now is a great time to give feedback to the team making Vuex 5 so we can make sure we get the best possible library for writing our applications. That's all for now, and I'll see you in the next video.